Beat Cyberpunk 2020, the role-playing game of the dark future. This is Regina's copy. She and her group have decided to play Cyberpunk 2020 for their next campaign, which means she's going to need a character. There are five steps to creating a Cyberpunk 2020 character. Picking a role, generating statistics, generating a life path, buying skills, and buying gear and cyberware. Regina is going to go through them all, one by one. Your role sets your character's baseline. It gives a general idea of what they are and what face they project to the world. There are 10 roles available. Rocker boys, rebels who use performance to fight the system. Solos, the mercenaries and warriors of the dark future. Netrunners, hackers who plug their brains directly into the net. Techies, specialists in breaking down and building up machines. Medtechs, who are as much engineer as physician in the cybernetic age. Medias, influencers who either report the truth or bend it. Cops, maybe private security, maybe public, but on the edge and ready for everything. Corporates, working inside the system to make the world a better place, maybe for everyone, maybe just for themselves. Fixers, the deal makers and information brokers who make everything happen. And nomads, wanderers who roam the vast wastelands between the urban sprawls. Regina looks through her choices and decides to make a medtech who goes by the handle Cross. Someone's going to have to heal up the rest of the group when they get shot. It might as well be her. Each Cyberpunk 2020 character has nine statistics. These represent their base ability in specific areas. They're rated from 2 to 10, with the average falling around 5. You can't have statistics less than 2 or greater than 10. The nine statistics are Intelligence, which measures memory, perception, and problem-solving ability. Reflexes, the sum total of your hand-eye coordination, agility, and coordination. Cool, how well you react under pressure and pain. Technical ability, your capacity for interacting with and using technology. Empathy, your ability to understand and deal with other living things. Body type, which is your physical power and endurance. It has two derived statistics, carry and lift. Attractiveness, a measurement of how good you look according to societal norms. Movement allowance, which is how fast you can run. It has two derived statistics, run and leap. And luck, which is a pool of points you can use to improve your roles during the game. There are two different ways to generate your statistics. In method one, you roll 9 to 10 and total them. That gives you a pool of character points, which you can then split among your nine statistics. In method two, you roll 1d10 nine times, re-rolling any ones and twos. You place each of the numbers you rolled into one of the nine statistics. There is a third method, in which a preset pool of character points is spent on statistics. This method is usually reserved for making non-player characters, but the referee can allow its use for player characters if they so desire. Regina's referee has asked everyone to use method two. Regina grabs a d10 and rolls it nine times, recording each roll. 10, 4, 3, 3, 9, 4, 10, 6, and a 2. She re-rolls the 2 and gets an 8. Then she sits down and looks at her character. Cross is a medtech, so Regina knows intelligence and technical ability will be key. Since she has two 10s, she places one in each. She thinks about putting the 9 into reflexes, or cool, but decides to put it into attractiveness instead. After all, Cyberpunk 2020 is a world where style reigns over substance. Regina decides Cross is physically a bit weak. Going down the list, she drops 4 into reflexes and a 3 into body. According to the rules, this lets her carry up to 30 kilograms and deadlift up to 40 kilograms. She notes that down. Next, she puts a 3 into movement allowance. Her run, or how fast she can move in a single action, is derived from this by multiplying it by 3. Cross has a run of 9 meters. Her leap, or how far she can jump from a running start, is run divided by 4, rounded down, or 2 meters. Since the dark future is a dangerous place, Regina feels Cross needs some sort of edge when it comes to fighting. She puts her 8 into luck. This gives her a nice pool to use to boost skill checks when she needs it. She's not always good in a fight, but she's better when it counts. Finally, she places the 6 into cool and the remaining 4 into empathy. Once you've got a handle on your role and your statistics, it's time for Life Path. A Life Path creates a bullet point history of your character. It doesn't fill in all the blanks, but it gives you a skeleton to hang your more complex background on. Your character's Life Path can be created via random roles or by picking the choices which appeal to you. Regina's referee has asked the group to randomly generate their Life Path 
with a promise that if they don't like what they come up with, they can work on changes. Regina starts cross off with origins and personal style. On the dress and personal style table, she rolls 1d10 three times. 2. Blue jeans for preferred clothing. 3. Short and spiked for hairstyle. And 8. Or spiked heeled boots for affectation. She can work with that. Regina rolls a 10 on ethnic origins, which means her family background is European. Regina speaks some Spanish, so she decides Cross comes from Spain. Next is family background. First up is family ranking. With a 3, it looks like one or both of Cross's parents were corporate technicians. On to parents. A roll of 8 means some trouble. Something has happened to her parents. As instructed, Regina heads for the something happened to your parents table next. This time, she rolls a 2. Cross's parents died in an accident. Next comes family status. This time it's a 1, which means Cross's family status is in danger. She heads to family tragedy. With a 6, it looks like things have changed. The accident which killed her parents only looked like an accident. It was really murder. She's the only survivor of her family. On the childhood environment table, Regina rolls a 2. Cross grew up in the corporate suburbs. Next comes the sibling table. Regina rolls an 8. Cross has no siblings, which is probably a good thing, because if she did, they'd be dead now. The third part of Life Path is motivations. Regina is curious to see what makes Cross tick, considering her background. On the personality traits table, Regina rolls 7, silly and fluff-headed. On the person you value most table, she rolls a 5. Right now, she values herself most. On what do you value most, she rolls an 8. She values power most. On how do you feel about most people, she rolls a 2. Her attitude is neutral. She's fine with letting people prove themselves. Finally, for most value possession, she rolls a 6. That's a recording, likely of her parents. The final part of Life Path is life events. The previous parts of the Life Path have determined where Cross came from. This next section determines what she's done since becoming, more or less, an adult. First, Regina rolls 2d6, plus 16, to figure out Cross's age. She rolls a 2 and a 3 for a total of 21. Cross is 21 years old. Now she rolls 1d10 once on the life events table for each year past 16, or 5 times. She rolls 2, big problems and big wins, 7, romantic involvement, 1, big problems and big wins again, 4, friends and enemies, and 9, nothing happened that year. Now that Regina's got the categories, it's time to drill down and see what happened with each event. With the first big problems and big wins, Regina rolls a 4. That's even, which means it's a win and not a loss. She rolls 1d10 on the You Get Lucky table and scores a 1. Cross made a powerful connection. A second one means that the connection is a member of the Night City Police Department. Next is her romantic involvement. Regina rolls a 3. Looks like Cross had a happy love affair. It's back to big problems and big wins. This time, Regina rolls a 9, which is odd, so that's a problem. She rolls 1d10 on the Disaster Strikes table. With a 2, Cross was in prison for 1d10, or 5 months. Regina checks the What Are You Going to Do About a table and rolls a 3. Right now, Cross is just trying to live it down and forget it. Finally comes friends and enemies. She rolls a 3, which means it's a friend, not a foe. With a 5, the friend is a woman, and 7 means the woman is like a foster parent to Cross. Regina could go on and roll more about her friend's styles and motivations, but she decides to ask instead if another PC in the game, the Solo Brooks, can fill this role. It gives her a nice hook to be part of the party. There's nothing to roll in the last event, since nothing special happened. Regina pauses and rereads her life path and her statistics. There's a lot of interesting ideas there, and it allows her to sketch out a summary background across as a corporate kid who grew up in the suburbs outside of Barcelona. She was the daughter of two engineers. Regina likes the idea of Cross being on the autism spectrum, and decides that manifests as trouble interacting with people, but with strong connections with the machines and with animals. As a result, she seems a bit flighty and silly to some, but the truth is, she's smart as a whip. Encouraged by her dads, Cross went to university early to study veterinary medicine. While she was in the middle of completing her studies, her dads both died. Officially, it was an accident, but she discovered the truth. It was really the corp covering up an illegal project by scrapping everything, including the people working on it. Disgusted because she was going to school on the corp's credit, Cross dropped out and vanished into the edge by running away to Night City. Things might have gone bad there if she hadn't met a Night City PD detective. The two got involved and are actually still an item to this day, although it hasn't gotten so serious that they've moved in together. She's got a job as a tech at a pet shelter and met a solo there named Brooks, who was also volunteering. It's a good thing, too, because it wasn't long after that that a gang kidnapped Cross and held her captive, forcing her to use her medical skills to patch up their members. 
Brooks and Cross's lover rescued her, and out of gratitude, Cross has been helping Brooks as the team's unofficial medtech ever since. However, the experience has left her shaken, and lately she's been more and more withdrawn, thinking more of herself and how she can get enough power to prevent it from ever happening again. There's still holes to fill in, but that gives Regina enough to continue on with character generation. Statistics are inherent. Everyone has them to some degree or another. Skills, on the other hand, represent abilities which are gained from learning and training. There are two types of skills, career skills and pickup skills. Career skills are a package of skills available to you because of your role. This includes your role special ability. Special abilities are unique to your role and no one else has them. Other people may play guitar on stage, but only rocker boys have charismatic leadership. You have 40 points to spend on your career skills. You don't need to buy ranks in every career skill. There are also pickup skills. These represent things learned as part of your background, hobbies, and the usual assortment of general skills picked up along the path of your life. You have a number of points to spend on pickup skills equal to your intelligence plus reflexes. You can spend those points in any skill except special abilities. The maximum rank for a skill is 10. Some skills have a number in parentheses after them. These skills are highly specialized or potent, and as a result, cost more. A skill marked with a 2 costs 2 points per rank. A skill marked with a 3 costs 3 points per rank, and so forth. Everyone starts with 8 ranks in their native language. It's time for Regina to buy Cross some skills. A medtech's career package includes the special ability of medical tech, plus awareness notice, basic tech, cryotank operation, diagnose, education, human perception, library search, pharmaceuticals, and zoology. She has 40 points to spend. Regina wants Cross to be good at her job, but keeps in mind she never graduated from school, so she buys six ranks in medical tech and another six points in zoology. That leaves her 28 points. Going down the list, she decides on four for awareness notice and spends four points on basic tech to get two ranks, because it's one of those skills that costs more to get ranks. Two on cryotech operation, five on diagnose, three on education, two on human perception, two on library search, and three on pharmaceuticals, which is another skill that has a times two multiplier for its cost. Regina adds her intelligence and reflexes for 16 points to spend on pickup skills. She decides Cross must know some biology, so grabs three ranks of that. Brooks is teaching Cross to shoot, so Regina buys three ranks in handgun. Since Cross was born in Spain, she gets no language Spanish at rank eight for free, but she'd also like to be able to speak and read English, so she buys no language English for Cross has also lived in Night City long enough to pick up two ranks in Streetwise. Finally, Regina decides Cross is meticulous in all things, including her appearance, so she picks up Personal Grooming, Rank 2, and Wardrobe Style, Rank 2. With those 16 points spent, Regina is done with skills. The last step is buying gear and cyberware. To figure out how much you have to spend, roll 1d6 and divide it by 3. Remember to round down. Multiply your result by the appropriate value based on your role and special ability as on the table on page 58. This determines your starting funds in Euro Dollars, also known as eddies, the currency of the game. If you feel like you need more money to buy cyberware, tell the referee. Your character can make a deal with a paramilitary group, crime family, or corporation to purchase up to 10,000 more eddies worth of cybernetic implants. The downside to this is you owe your sponsor big time and the referee will make sure they collect. Regina rolls a 6 on her 1d6. Divided by 3, that's 2. Multiply that by the value listed for a med tech with a rank 6 medical tech, 3,000, and you've got a total of 6,000 eddies. Even though the cyberware chapter comes after the gear chapter, we're going to start there because that requires some explaining. Cyberware is technology surgically implanted into your body. Some of it, like programmable tattoos, is decorative. Others, like computers in your brain or robot limbs, are more functional. There's a wide variety of cyberware to choose from, and many people in the Cyberpunk 2020 universe wear it as much for fashion as they do for practical reasons. Some cyberware is technically add-on for other cyberware. In other words, you've got to have the base level cyberware installed to get those options. You can't install neuralware without a basic processor to hook it into, and options for cybernetic eyes, ears, and limbs require you to actually have cybernetic eyes, ears, and limbs before they can be implanted. Cyber optics and cyber limbs also have limits to how many options can be added. There's only so much space in those things. Cyberware has a cost in eddies, but also in humanity loss. Humanity loss represents the trauma of connecting foreign objects to your nervous system, the shift in the way you view the world when you can see into the infrared or have claws in your fingertips, 
and the adjustments you have to make when you're moving faster than everyone else. It doesn't truly represent an actual loss of humanity, but the difficulty, frustration, and disconnection which can come when interacting with a world built for baseline human. The humanity loss for some cyberware is static, but others require a role, because different people react to different implants in different ways. As you buy your cyberware, keep track of the humanity loss total. For every 10 points of humanity loss, reduce your character's empathy by 1. You can't begin play with an empathy lower than 1, and your referee may inch that number up to 2 or even 3 at their discretion. Regina wants Cross to have some cyberware, but isn't willing to go and hawk to an organization to do it. That pretty much rules out any of the expensive stuff, so she stops and asks herself what a young veterinary student might save up for or get as a present from her parents in order to make herself better for her prospective career. Regina starts with Cross's head. She'll need a basic processor, which costs 1,000 eddies, and it has a humanity loss of 1d6. She rolls a 1. Then she adds a machine tech link, since a lot of surgical equipment can be cybernetically controlled, and a data link, so that she can jack into computers. Finally, she picks up interface plugs, because without those, all those processors she just added to her brain are fairly useless. She's down to 4,600 eddies, and has a humanity loss of 9 so far. Next, Regina thinks about how useful it would be for a veterinary surgeon to have microscopic vision. For that, she needs cyber optics. She chooses to replace one of Cross's eyes and adds in the Times Square Marquee option, which adds in an HUD function to her optics, a microscopic option so she can zoom in on tiny details, and finally, a color shifting option, since that ties in the Cross's like of control over her sense of style. She also decides to go Cross Tech Hair, which allows her to change her hair color at a moment's notice. That leaves Cross with 3,150 eddies and a humanity loss of 16. Since empathy drops by 1 for every 10 points of humanity loss you have, Regina lowers Cross's empathy from 4 to 3. If during play she picks up 4 more points of humanity loss, she'll drop to a 2. With cyberware out of the way, money can be spent on gear. This includes weapons, armor, equipment, lifestyle options, and services. Weapons have an availability rating. Weapons rated E can be bought almost anywhere. Weapons rated C can be bought in specialty stores. Weapons rated P or R are hard to find, and the referee can declare them off limits during character generation. Regina decides to outfit Cross with a Dai Long Cyber Mag 15, a cheap light pistol. She also picks up a heavy leather jacket for a little protection. It's not great armor, but it's better than nothing. With a weapon and some armor out of the way, and 3,050 eddies left, she looks to gear. Since she's a med tech, Cross can use a surgical kit, which is expensive at 400 eddies, and a med kit for 50 eddies. She's got 2,600 eddies left. Regina wants Cross to have a place to live, so looks at apartments. They're 200 eddies per month base, multiplied by a modifier depending on location. A moderately safe area to live has a times 2 modifier, so Cross pays 800 eddies, plus 200 eddies for utilities, for two months off the street. That leaves her with 1,600 eddies left. 400 of that goes to a cell phone, and she plugs down 100 eddies for a month of phone service to go with it. 1,000 eddies are spent on clothing, since Cross is a bit of a fashion hound. That leaves Cross with 100 eddies in her pocket when the game begins. And with that, Cross is ready to hit the edge in Cyberpunk 2020. Regina wants to work out some background details with Brooks's player and the referee, but overall, she's satisfied. This should be a fun game. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the game, check out these other videos which should be showing up on the screen now. One is another in the How to Play Cyberpunk 2020 series. The other is from our friends at PlayStation Access, where you can watch them play the game and get a feel for what it's like. Cyberpunk 2020 and the contents of this video are copyright R. Talzorian Games. If you'd like to buy a digital copy of the game, you can find it at drivethroughrpg.com. Physical copies of Cyberpunk 2020 can be purchased from our web store or from your local gaming vendor. Please like and subscribe, and remember, stay safe on the streets.